Hello everyone, this is Kodak giving you a shoutcast in a game between Duck Low Raw and Tarsen. Game 2 taking place here on Tall Dareem Altar. Tarsen spotting as the Red Terran player over here at the 8 o'clock or 7 o'clock position. Meanwhile, we have Duck Low Raw spotting as the light blue Protoss player over here at the 10 o'clock position. So this is going to be Terran versus Protoss on Tall Dareem Altar. And now... Apparently, uh, Tarsin is telling him that he's going to be going for special tactics, not cheese, but um, no, just special tactics, just like the one that Duck Load Rod did in game one, using warp prisms to drop who drops as a Protoss player. Uh, well, apparently, Duck Load Rod does. So, Duck Load Rod now just training up probes. Both players um, will have a lot of time to just build up their forces. Um, Tarsin. Tarsin Vodka special tactics. All right, so the play the player is having a little bit of fun there. Um, we should see expansions come into play. Expansions very popular on Tall to Reef Altar. I, um, one base play doesn't work out nearly as well as you're able to defend against one base play rather quickly against any aggression because of the walking distance. The only exception to the rule there is that Protoss players are able to set up four gate pressure rather easily and then warp in units by warping in those units they're able to uh, deploy the units straight into the battlefield and that really really helps them out we are getting some uh, barracks in play we are also getting some gas as well so tarsen may be going into um, another factory a quick factory or he may be trying to go for reaper expand and we meanwhile duck load rod now going into that very fast nexus a nexus before the two minute 30 second mark slowing down his probe production ever so slightly in order to do so a uh, probe now uh, warping in a gateway perhaps yeah a gateway so he will be behind on food for a little bit of time and um, we are going to be finishing this orbital com or getting another scv there so it looked like tarson um getting up to 16 food so this was not a typical build at all i think he actually delayed his barracks just a little bit sitting at 17 food over 19 is not your standard um a uh, standard 12 racks it may have ended up being a 13 based upon a bad mining location as we are now going into the factory oh no i believe that was actually refinery before gas as this one factory coming into play rather quickly and now tarson going into hellions so this is the special tactics that we were talking about earlier and duck load raw only getting um gateways units no cybernetics core means that there are not going to be any stalkers and those Hellions may be able to get off a lot of damage against those units. So yeah, this is your standard reactor, barracks, uh, or refinery, reactor, barracks swap onto the factory in order to get a lot of production and a lot of Hellions out. This probe going to be trying to come up the ramp in just a moment. There is one Marine that should be able to deter and stop the probe. But the second Nexus is already up. Duckload Raw sitting at 20 Harvesters compared to 18 now. And that, that discrepancy and that... The discrepancy and the difference will just continue to grow as Tarsen is only running off of one base right now. Um, t what, double training Hellions or quadruple training Hellions? This one probe coming around the far side and may be able to sneak past this Marine. So Duckload Raw coming in with a very, very sneaky probe. There, that probe going to be able to um, come in and now, oh, perhaps get taken down finally. So two Hellions able to take it down. But the uh, jig is up. Tarsen knows that Duckload Raw knows. That there are Hellions out. So two Hellions out. Two more Hellions bringing up their rear as well. Where are they? They are still being trained. So it is going to be four Hellions trying to get inside the base. But with one Stalker already in position. I think it was Chrono boosted out. It doesn't really stand much of a chance. We really need to get more and more Hellions there. As this SAV tries to run around the corner. And Oba is able to sneak by. And it looks like that SAV is going to get any scouting information. No, not at all. As this gateway um, gets repositioned so that there is not that little bit of a gap there. We are going to have four Hellions. Those Hellion drivers looking off into the distance trying to see if they can make their way by. And they are not going to be able to. Unable to squeeze through. And one of the drivers wishes that he wasn't in the back. Bad special tactics. <laughs> Alright, so it looks like we are going to have a little bit, have a much more straight up game now. The early tactics have failed on the part of Duckload, or on the part of Tarsen. Now going into, um, what, Banshee play with the Siege Tank? Or perhaps just Marine Tank? We are getting one bunker here. The Stalkers could try to make a move out, but um, Duckload Raw says because Terran. Oh, even the professionals have opinions on what races are what. 
Anyway, Cybernex Core about halfway completed on that um, warp gate research, 140, 160 seconds total. Meanwhile, additional gateway units still being pumped out the old-fashioned way, the Brood War style, coming in through that gateway instead of being warped in. The command Center currently um, upgrading to an orbital command as another refinery being placed down, and we are now going into more siege tanks and another barracks. So... Of uh, four production buildings off of two bases, and it looks like Tarsen will need at least two more. Meanwhile, Duckload Ross sitting on um what robotics facilities, four gateways. He should be able to work out pretty well as a zealot. Oh, taking a little bit too much damage from those Hellions, um, but still very thankful that he has Protoss shields. Duckload Raw transferring over some probes over here. It looks like he only has two probes on this assimilator. Still needs one more as the Stalkers are still moving out and trying to get into the proper position. Terran, Tarsin has a lot, a, a significantly larger army just for the moment. There you go, finally evening it up there. And we are adding a robotics facility. Robotics facility most likely means that we will have Colossi. We are getting a second reactor as well. So I don't believe Tarsin has a barracks with a tech lab. He is not going to have Stim, Combat Shield, or any marauders so this is a rather unusual tactic as hellion's going to be dropped along the back side of the base we'll see if it's going to work out no duck load raw apparently knows the special tactics playbook of the terran and of tarsen and now ready to deal with that drop if it ever um, does try to be executed we are now going into another barracks finally, and we are also going into a reactor on the starport. The hell drop now trying to come into play, and oh, not successful at all. The Hellions pretty much getting destroyed. Um, yeah, the Hellion just instead doing some scouting instead of anything else, and the medevac may get shot down. The medevac down to 33 hit points and able to fly over the island and over that high ground location there, and now trying to get away from those stalkers. The stalker is able to move faster than the medevac can fly, and... The Stalkers now, I guess, trying continuing to pursue as the Stalkers could not find that medevac. We are now getting an observer here by Duckload Rod. You have to be very careful with Duckload. You need to make sure that you... Oh, the medevac may get taken down. Down to 20 hit points, down to 7. And the final shot right there. Down it goes. Yeah. So Tarsen really far behind now. Taking a look at the losses. 650 versus 300. His income is also far behind. So economic advantage to Duckload Raw. Army advantage to duckload raw, tech advantage to duckload raw. Um, I the game's still too early to call, but I think you know who I think will be able to take this. Um, if unless duckload raw just makes an absolutely horrible mistake and kind of gives it to his opponent, siege tanks are still being added on. We are now seeing on four siege tanks and two Vikings, but there's not enough Vikings to really deal with the Colossus production either. The command center is being built over here. The observer does spot this. So he will be able to know when that expansion is finally taken in as there are siege tanks lining up and getting ready to shell out damage onto those zealots and those colossi. Back over here, the stalkers still continue to move back. We are now getting the zealots. Perhaps they will come in from this direction here. I'm not quite sure why they're walking all the way here. This is a weird place to try to um, execute an attack as there's no real reason to be over here. Yeah, finally, Duckload Ross saying, oops, I needed to go to this expansion, not that expansion. So that may have bought Tarsin enough time to actually uh, macro up a decent sized army and get back into this game. He's sitting on 50 SCVs compared to 65 probes. Uh, another orbital command now being researched. There is an observer nearby. Siege tanks are making their way over. And the stalkers may be able to just simply... Um, to simply take us down with this one Colossus as well. The SCVs don't know what's going to happen as Tarsen now simply waiting for the attack. And now in come the Stalkers and the Zealots. And it, here we go. Siege tanks are blasting through, trying to get as much damage onto those units. Marines and, and now taking down the Zealots as well. Down it goes. A Viking now taking to the skies. And I believe Duckload Raw was not ready for the large number of Marines. The Marines still do not have Stim. But... I believe if Tarsen actually had Stim on those Marines, he would have been able to chase and finish off the rest of those units there. So, significant losses by Duckload Raw, but he is getting up another expansion as well. He does have the superior economy. Um, taking a look at the Harvester count, 71 compared to 50. Um, a lot more minerals. Um, well, maybe not as many minerals now as there are currently three mules in play trying to even up the score. 
and now army sizes we have 3300 compared to 2275 you can see the protoss player here continuing to just train or just trying to train up more and more of those probes training up three probes at a time and this is really where duckload raw starts to shine when he gets into that 80 to 90 probe range because the protoss units are able to deploy units straight into the battlefield and they and all of those gateway units essentially have a five second build time if you have enough gateways you can just constantly um, d replenish your forces and then win that war of attrition as the Terran player needs, you know, the, the critical 42 seconds to build up siege tanks, banshees, marines, and marauders. We'll see how this is all going to work out. Combat shield nearing completion. Level 1 infantry upgrades um, on both weapons and attack as this nexus is now up and running. Now, Duckload Rod, though, starting to fall behind in the mineral count of the army. His harvester count is so high that even though he has a 30 food advantage, he doesn't have that large of an army advantage at all. Total resources is actually in favor of Tarsen, who is currently supply blocked at 153 over 153, getting two additional supply depots. It looks like Tarsen will be making a, a, a drastic move in just a few more seconds. It looks like he wants to try to get into that 160, 170 food range and then continue to just train up more and more units. You can see his production buildings, how much they are there. And now, are we going to get an, oh, another starport for another reactor um, reactor production on Vikings and Metavax? 166 compared to 185, also going into a Ghost Academy. So both players really really just trying to get as large of economic advantage as possible oh there is a photon cannon here that photon cannon may spell certain doom for a courageous medevac pilot we'll see what's going to be happening and now does the medevac see that there is in fact a cannon there it's just going to hold off in that back position it needs to be very very careful as um not quite sure oh it looks like Ducklord Raw was purposely even killing some of his own probes, sitting at 88 probes. And now the Marines are dropping in on this side here. And now it looks like the Marines need a stim in order to take down the rest of those Stalkers. The Stalkers are going to be forced to pull back. And now Stalkers down over here as well. So a war on two fronts. Down goes the Medevac. Another, oh, a Stalker not destroyed there as the Marines are now finishing off even more and more units. Getting in a lot of damage in general. That one poor Zealot down, it goes again. And another Stalker getting destroyed. So, really, Tarsen doing a great job. Oh, almost doing a great job there. Almost lost that last Marine. The Marine down to two hit points. So, armor for the win for all of these Marines here. Able to stick around and survive for so long. It looks like this one Assimilator will not get taken down. Well, maybe if this Stalker is lazy. Alright, there you go. There is a, a scouting supply depot over here, and now a proxy pylon and another nexus by Duckload Raw. So Duckload Raw oh, um, expanding very, very aggressively. Some might say he's actually overexpanding as well, but um, we'll have to see. He does have a lot of gateways, so he will be able to replenish all of his units really quickly. With 11 gateways, he can build up a 22 food army in 5 seconds as the Vikings are now making their way out. Tarsen does have a large group of siege tanks, though, as the Archons are now being merged together level 3 weapons upgrade as those Archons are going to be able to take a beating from those siege tanks. Archons have 350 hit points and are not armored units. Siege tanks once again sieging up. There you go and a nice quick blast from those siege tanks there and a large army by Tarsen. Tarsen now playing hop, skip, and a jump with all of these siege tanks as a proxy pylon is in this position to pretty much scout out this location here. Vikings are now engaging after one Colossus. The siege tanks are continuing the push and now this Colossus may get taken down. Not quite sure what a Duckload Raw really plans to do with this. Both sides have maximum food army. Both sides sitting on 10,000 resource armies. So a 10,000 resource army coming in from both sides as the Colossi simply attack moving and this is going to become a base trade vikings in the air marines and marauders coming in from behind and duckload raw with the additional bases and we should be able to come out on top as he's much more spread apart marines and marauders now just um, getting their having their way with those probes taking them down and all of the critical tech buildings will get destroyed a lot of stalkers however warped in over here and that was a nice warp in as now stalkers and con are continuing to push both sides armies are in the very in the what double or the six digit range no duck tarson now down to about nine thousand total resources as these scvs are trying to run away some of them or all of them will be able to do so as 
both players are now trying to re-establish and, and just hit the reset button. A new gateway already coming in. No cybernetic. Oh, cybernetic score already down. So I'm, I'm a little curious as to why uh, we didn't see any of those higher tech buildings being placed down first. Oh, Dark Shrine. Oh, lovely, lovely maneuver by Ducklord while warping in a Dark Shrine in the last couple seconds. So... And after those command centers are destroyed, and now that the starports are gone, no real serious detection. And now this one, Dark Templar, already at three kills. EMP, oh, EMP Shockwave does reveal them. So another Dark Templar going to be coming in. So the ghosts are the only counter to those Dark Templar. And the ghost needs to be um, be very careful, trying to go after some more of those units, continuing to attack. Uh, photon cannons are in play as well. We still have that um, Templar archives here, so we may get a research. No, no research on Psystorm. As the Stalkers are trying to engage, the Stalkers may be able to just shut down many of those units. Oh, there's going to be a shelling right here as all of those Stalkers take a bit too much damage, moving at the speed of light to try to get away. There are uh, a command. There is a command center here. A bunch of SCVs over there as well. Two additional gateways warping down in over here as the barracks are just uh, giving plenty of scouting information. The Archons trying to take down those barracks. The barracks already down to 500 some odd damage as the siege takes Marines, Marauders, and Ghost with Vikings looking to put forth some pressure. Stalkers are now pushing in as well. SCVs now uh, not realizing that they're going to get absolutely destroyed by all of those Colossi. And I don't think there's much that um, that Tarsen can do. Duckload Raha has such a large advantage at this point. Multiple gateways, command centers, um, yeah, trying to rebuild them all. Not going to really work. The uh, Colossi just get, getting stuck off over here. But the Siege Tanks may be able to start dealing some damage. And the Vikings are going to be able to at least take down one Colossus. A gimme Colossus there. As another command center now taken down. So there's another command center here by Tarsen. And one down over here. And no real mining taking place. A Dark Templar now battling out a sea of a lot of Dark Templars. Quickly getting EMP Shockwave. And right after the EMP Shockwave, they did merge into an Archon. So that was a brilliant move. And there's the GG. And I consider that a GG well played. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. Hope you guys enjoyed this 1v1 replay and game 2 in this series between Duckload Raw and Tarsen.